Yeah, hello, welcome. Um, I'm really glad that you decided to join our session today. Uh, I hope you're enjoying staying at Amsterdam and you're enjoying uh, KubeCon this year. Uh, my name is Grzegorz Panek and I'm a research engineer for the Orange. And today with Piotr Matysiak, we are going to share with you the output of our project called Edge Relocation. So basically we are going to talk today about the seamless migration of the cloud native workloads across multiple edge clusters, ed multiple edge uh, servers. So first of all, I will give you some motivation from our side, how we see the edge and why we are taking care about the edge. And later on, I will give the floor to the Piotr that will give you a deeper uh, view on the technical stuff, how we are managing multiple clusters and how we implemented a uh, edge allocation procedure. And finally, I will give you some uh, notes on the future research direction of our project. So currently, Orange is uh, deploying its own 5G network, 5G connectivity, because we uh, believe that the edge computing is not enough to achieve the low latency communication. In order to take profit from the late, low latency communication for the edge services, we need as well a uh, really rapid radio access network to the edge services. And uh, we think like an uh, integration of the 5G and edge infrastructure will give you, will give you and will give us a uh, whole opportunity to take profit from the low latency communication for the edge computing. Nowadays, more and more partners, industrial partners are requesting, are asking us, are you already able to, to deploy our own services on your uh, edge infrastructure? And uh, during these exercises with industrial partners, we noticed that uh, a lot of the, or majority of the use cases that the partners are developing uh, are characterized not only by the low latency communication, but as well about the end user mobility. So we notice a functional gap, how to take care about the edge application and the end user mobility, how to take care about the service continuity for the users that are in the mobility state. So uh, we identified some uh, gap procedure in the ecosystem that is a migrating of the edge application from one edge cluster to the another edge cluster because of the following the end user. Maybe I will give you the more uh, visual, more visual uh, view on, on our problem that we are dealing with. So let's imagine that we have an autonomous vehicle steering system that is deployed at the edge cloud, edge cluster. Um, however, as we know, the users, the cars are moving and are approaching different geographical um, location. So it may turns out that once the user will change its position, it should be handed off to the another G node B to the another um, access network station. However, the, the edge uh, cluster that is closest to the targeted edge, the targeted uh, radio access network uh, is not ready to handle the end user request because the edge application is not there yet. So we implemented the edge location procedure to move this application from one cluster to the another seamlessly in order to guarantee the service continuity for the end user. But you may ask me, okay, why not just to replicate the edge applications everywhere? That will solve the problem. But we did exercises with our operational team and it turns out that the deployment of the edge infrastructure is really costly. And we need somehow to optimize uh, the utilization of the resources at the whole topology. That's why we decided to implement some pro procedure that based on the follow me approach, okay? So if the user is requesting to access some application, we are just on demand creating this application there. But it's not only the one reason why we need to um, take care about the relocation, as relocation. Uh, we should uh, guarantee as well, for instance, the load balancing for our resources in order to increase the capacity of the system. Uh, we can um, imagine that one of our edge servers would be off due to, I don't know, maintenance reasons, power outage or something like that. 
or we are just wanted to, to move our application or move our infrastructure to the um, provider, at other cloud provider. So uh, all the use cases that I'm mentioning requires the moving the application from one cluster to the another with no service disruption for the end user. So uh, just before going uh, um, floor to the PLTRA, I will give you a um, view on the our real objectives of the project and real um, contributions to, to solve this project. So in fact, we implemented two procedures. The far, first one we called Azure Location, and this is about the seamless migration of the containerized application between the clusters. And the second that we called lifecycle management uh, of the Edge application, and, but in fact, this is the lifecycle management of Edge application and the uh, end user management because this procedure is observing all the time thanks to the 5g network it's observing all the time the user positioning the um, radio um, conditions it's observing as well the edge infrastructure utilization and uh, based on this uh, observability stuffs we are taking a decision whether to migrate migrate our application or to stay at the uh, source edge cluster so um, to implement that, we implemented uh, some smaller uh, proof of concepts uh, that we can mention, uh, for instance, observability controller that is all the time monitoring the resource utilization at Kubernetes clusters. And we implemented as well topology controller that is taking um, care about where the, where the um, edge cluster currently is located. Maybe not, not just is taking care about uh, the edge infrastructure is aware about whether the cluster is overloaded or not. And finally, we implemented a placement controller, uh, which implements some mathematical modeling, some mathematical optimization on um, analysis, whether to migrate our application or not. I will give you more detail about all the controllers in the next slides. So now, Piotr, the floor is yours. Thank you, Greg, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I would like to talk about why we are at this uh, event and uh, how we place at this event. So we talk about the edge. You can imagine that we have different types, different layers of edge, far edge, mid edge, uh, close edge of, if you will, uh, cloud fog uh, or just edge, or you, you can have different uh, type of layers, you know, uh, you call it as, as, as you want. And on, on top of that, we would like to have some uh, control uh, management plane, some kind of orchestrator. So we are at the edge and to place us uh, at the Kubernetes event, we assume that each edge cluster uh, is a Kubernetes cluster. It, it's it's separate cluster with its own management, uh, with its um, uh, separate control plane and of course separate worker nodes and if you will also the cluster may be from different providers different kind of kind of clusters uh, number metal clusters managed clusters etc uh, and for the orchestrator I don't want to go deep dive into why we took the MCO which stands for edge multi cluster orchestrator uh, but what we like about MCO is that it's intent-based. There, there are a lot of type of, type of intents. The, the most important is for us the placement intents. So it's crucial to remember that we have uh, placement intents in the MCO. And also, it's composed of uh, many different controllers. Again, the placement controllers are the most important for us. And MCO introduced some mechanism to take a lot of clusters from different provider and different types of clusters under, um, under an umbrella called logical cloud. And then we can deploy on those uh, clusters application, applications using uh, MCO APIs. We can deploy application on single cluster, on the set of cluster, it depends. What we do not like about MCO is the lack of the functionalities that we would like to uh, have for our use case. So we extended 
the MCO with the relocation workflow, as being said. And in fact, the relocation workflow itself, it's, uh, it can be defined in the MCO via uh, endpoints as an intent. So in the intent, we can specify what application should be relocated where, to which cluster. And if we uh, deploy, if we uh, invoke such relocation workflow, the following procedure will be uh, will be proceed. So we will collect the information about the placement intent based on the relocation intent. We will update it. Of course, the changes will be um, applied, and the reconciliation will be will take uh, take turn. But we will not uh, we will not delete the old instance from the previous clusters. Before that, we need to make sure that the new instance is ready, so we check for the readiness, and then we steer the traffic from the user, which can be external from the, from the cluster, so the service mesh is not always the solution. Um, and only when we steer the traffic, we can, under a condition that this is application is not shared application, there are no other user who is using this application, we can again uh, update the intent about placement and remove this application too. I don't want to show any demo. We, have, we are constrained on the time. The system uh, makes, makes bigger and bigger, so I will show the abstracted way on the slides. So imagine that we deploy the, we say to the MK APIs, we want to deploy the application X, for example, on Cloud One and is deployed. And then uh, we can send the second uh, request to the MCO APIs with the relocation intent that we would like to relocate the application X to the, for example, FOC2. And following the procedure I showed you in the previous slides, the application, of course, will be uh, relocated from Cloud1 as shown to the FOC2 with almost uh, it will be almost seamless migration. The traffic steering thing is work in progress. Uh, we have a simple solution, but there is a lot, a lot, a lot to do more. But as you can see here, we have some manual uh, in, invoke uh, uh, of the procedure, which is not the case, for example, in the scenario uh, where we have vehicles which are moving because there will be no admin who will uh, define and trigger such relocation. So we deep dive and we develop another two components, at least two components. The another work, workflow, which is LCM workflow and the placement controller for the, the our own placement controller, additional for the MCO. Uh, so for the LCM workflow, it's that's almost the same as the relocation. I mean, it's also intent-based, so we can define the intent for the LCM workflow where we can specify the application requirements, uh, for example, for the latency, for example, for the resource, how, ma how many resources the application needs, probably also the uh, type of algorithm to take into account when we will try to select the, the, the best cluster. And this is as follows. When we start the LCM workflow at the first, we subscribe to the, for the notifications. In our use case, the telco use case, we had only one uh, source from the uh, IMF, which is a network function of the 5G control plane. And we received the notification about the user movement for, from, from that point. We could uh, subscribe for many type of notification from many different uh, source of information. It depends on our use cases. This is for a proof of concept. So when we subscribe for the not notification, we enter the loop, uh, which, is, uh, which is running for the entire life cycle of the application. So we listen for the notification for the relocation. If it occurs, we call the placement controller and ask Make, make the decision where, where the application should be moved, where is the optimal place. And we wait for, for such a response. If this response is received, 
uh, we can make use of the relocation workflow described earlier and uh, generate such relocation workflow and invoke it. So uh, this is about the LCM. The placement controller, it requires some source of uh, knowledge to make the decision. So the first source of knowledge is LCM workflow where we define requirements and the second and third are the topology controller and the observability controller. We define proof of concept versions of, of those um, and going deep dive. Placement controller receives also the intent. So as a request, it receives the intent to select the best clusters and in the intent we specify the information which were provided in the LCM workflow. So application requirements, the type of algorithm which need to be selected to, to, to provide the placement. And of course, we also utilize the topology controller information. Uh, for example, the location or the latency information, but it's up to the, some kind of topology, um, some kind of edge provider which can provide such topology controller to, to define what information we can get. It's the same for the observability controller. Here we observe the resources on the Kubernetes clusters and based on that, we, so we have here at least three sources of truth and based on that, we can select one of our uh, algorithms which we define, for example, optimal or heuristic, uh, not going deep to the implementation details and the placement controller will uh, we uh, will send to us, we will respond with the best placement for our application. So to show you an example, we deploy the application manually as we did, and also we define the LCM workflow. So LCM workflow at the time of deployment is started and it will work until the application is killed. So it will listen for the notifications. If, we re it, if it receives the notification, of course, it will automatically make the decision and trigger the relocation. In this case, from cloud one to cloud two, it will continue. And if we receive another relocation uh, request, it will again make the decision and make the uh, relocation. We can do it as many times as we want. I think you, 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 you got the idea. And the LCM workflow can be started for many applications. So we can deploy any, any number of applications as we, as we want, and they will be separately, decision will be separately made, of course, on the same infrastructure. So the different application will, will make the decision, uh, the, sorry, uh, so uh, the decision for one application will somehow uh, impact on the decision on the second, uh, for the set second application, but this is an, an idea, so for us, this is not yet, tar yet targeted for the product, so this is open source, um, and this is as a proof of concept shown. So it's still work in progress. As an example of further work, we also consider the machine learning reinforcement learning agent to uh, interact with it uh, from the placement controller side. And based on that, we believe that we can further uh, optimize the decision which cluster is the best. But I think I showed you the general view and our process, how we receive, how we, uh, how we are here. And uh, I think um, I, uh, right now I can give a hand for the Greg to continue. Thank you. I don't know if Piotr, you mentioned that the edge allocation procedure that we implemented is already open source. So if you are dealing with the similar pro problems uh, of the migration of the um, application across the clusters, uh, you can just take it from the open source. Uh, the link was uh, included in the presentation. Uh, this is a part of the EMCO project currently, Edge Multi-Cluster Orchestrator project. But in order to make some fun with the procedure, we decided to integrate uh, open source 5G network with the um, partially open source MEX system and partially done by us in our project. So as you can see, we have a 5G core that is uh, all the time informing us about the 
user position, about the radio conditions for the user. We can still monitor what's the status of the our end user, whether it's a handoff or, or whether it's doing some movement or not. Because as you can see, uh, in order to user will um, access the Edge application, it needs to access through the 5G access network. So uh, we implemented as well the observability controller that is constantly observing the resource consumption at the di different clusters, edge clusters. And finally, we implemented placement controller. As Piotr mentioned, this is the place where we implemented heuristic and uh, reinforcement learning algorithms in order to decide whether to relocate or not based on the intents received from the 5G and edge infrastructure. Okay, topology mapping, how we did that. So for the 5G control plane, we take profit from the free 5GC project. It implements as well a data plane for the uh, access network and the simulator of the end user, we took profit from the UE Ranzim project. Our edge clusters, edge hosts were implemented as a single separated Kubernetes clusters. The service orchestrator uh, that we have in this architecture, um, we took profit from the MCO project, which uh, I mentioned before. And the, for the observability controller, we implemented like a Prometheus plus a Grafana MyMir solution. The placement controller is our um, own child, let's say. The same for the net network and MEC topology. So this is the last slide. I'm not going to to deep in this project because this is more mathematical modeling. But as Piotr and I mentioned before, we are receiving multiple notifications from the 5G control plane, from the edge infrastructure, and so first of all, we implemented the heuristic-based approach on whether to migrate our application or not, based on some CPU memory measurements, based on some latency um, observing. And currently, our ongoing work is uh, implementing reinforcement learning approach in order to the agent, let the agent learn our edge topology, let him know to, to how to react in our um, edge mobility case. So thank you a lot. If you have any question, please. Anybody got a Hi, Chesh. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a question about how, in, maybe I missed that, but maybe you did not describe it. Uh, how do you um, uh, describe the application and the services in the first place? I mean, uh, what kind of manifest format are you using? Are you using Terraform, uh, Tosca, things like this? Uh, could you repeat? It's hard to hear on the <laughs> stage. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, so my question was, uh, when you describe the application, what kind of manifest format, what kind of uh, domain-specific language are you using? Or are you using any of those sort of uh, domain-specific language? Are you using Terraform, uh, Tosca, things like this? Yeah, in fact, we do not, right now we do not care about the infrastructure creation, so uh, we assume that the infrastructure is here. We just register the clusters. And for the other manifests, I believe everything is uh, in the YAML format, which then is, you know, parsed in the programming languages. Is, yeah, also, yeah, we also use Helm packages to describe the application. So the Helm package is the input for the MCO project.